Hello, today's topic is 3.5, application problems with proportions. We're going to solve problems using proportions today. Like all word problems, there's a number of steps that we can follow. And number one, and the most important, is reading the problem at least twice. So figuring out what information is there and what we're looking to solve. Step two, we decide what you have to find. So you're looking for the missing term and you get to assign a letter to represent it. So you can use X, you can use N, or you can use any letter you like to set up your proportion to solve for the unknown. Once you have the information in your mind, you can set up the proportion using that information. And what's really nice about proportion word problems is that you can match up your units. So the units are very important when we set up a proportion. After you've got it set up, step four is to solve it. And then the last step five is to write your sentence answer, making sure that you include the appropriate units. So are you talking about money? Are you talking about weight in pounds or kilograms? Are you talking about distance in kilometers? That's very important to include in the answer. Example number one, at the rate of five candies for 20 cents, find the cost of four candies. Okay, so we've got quite a bit of information here. Five candies cost 20 cents. So we want to know our unknown is the cost of the four candies. What's so beautiful about setting up proportion is making our units match. So it doesn't matter the order so much in the way that you set up the proportion. As long as your units are matching, you're going to be doing just fine. So we've got five candies. I'm just going to use short form for 20 cents is equal to what we don't know is the cost. The candies must match in the same position. So the four candies is going to go up in the top because on the other side of the equal sign, I put the five candies on the top. I could have switched this around. That's fine. But then I would need to put the four candies down in the bottom. What I don't know is the cost. So I want you to notice how this lines up. So it's really important that our units line up. So candies and candies are on the same position and the cents and the cost that I don't know, which I've assigned as X, they're in the same position. Once we have that, then we can solve using algebra. We can cross multiply. So I'm going to take 20 times four and five times X. So five times X is five X is equal to 20 times four. Five X is equal to 20 times four, which is 80. And now because I want to isolate X, I need to do the inverse of what's happening to X. So I'm multiplying five times X so then I have to divide by five on both sides in order to have that balance. Five divided by five cancels, that makes one, leaving me with x is equal to 80 divided by five is 16. And what does that 16 mean? Remember that's the cost of the candies. Money went on the bottom, so the x is going to be equal to 16 cents. For this do together section, we're going to be very importantly watching the, the units when we set up the proportion. So we're looking at number one, at a certain store, nine markers cost $11.50. Okay, so $11.50 for nine markers. How much would seven markers cost? So again, we're looking for the money. That's our unknown, but we can set up our proportion. So I'm going to put nine markers is $11.50 is equal to, now I make my proportion match. The seven markers that I know goes in line in the same position as the nine markers. And then what I don't know is the cost of that. So I'm going to assign X. You could use C, you can use any letter you like. 
Now I can solve using cross multiplication. 9 times x on one side is equal to 1150 times 7. 9x is equal to 1150 times 7 is 8050, or we can write 80.5. And now, because I'm multiplying 9 to x, I need to divide by 9 on both sides of the equation. Cancelling. And x is equal to 8.94. But remember, the question says, how much would those markers cost? So we want to make sure that we use a dollar sign because that is what X is. X represents money, $8.94. Now let's say that you set this up a little bit differently. You'd still get the same answer. So let's say you chose to put the money on the top. That's totally fine. $11.50 for nine markers is equal to, in this case, you'd have to make sure that the money matches. So the cost is what we don't know. That's lining up on the numerator side with the 1150. And what we do know, the markers would end up in the denominator in line with the nine markers. And you would see that you'd get the exact same setup. So if your proportion is switched in its order from mine, that's totally fine. As long as your units are lining up, we are going to get the same answer. For number two, at the grocery store, seven apples cost $5. How many apples could you buy for $8? Okay, so at the store, seven apples, $5. How many apples? So I don't know that. Could you buy for $8? Okay, so I'm going to set up my proportion with the information that I do know matching up my units. Seven apples cost $5. How many apples? I don't know. That's X. Could you buy for $8? So that's beautiful because now I have my money in the denominator position and my apples up in the numerator position. Now I'm ready to cross multiply. 5 times x is equal to 7 times 8. 5x is equal to 7 times 8 is 56. 5 is multiplying to x, so in order to isolate x, I'm going to divide by 5 on both sides. And x is equal to 11.2. 56 divided by 5 doesn't work out perfectly. Well, we know that we're not going to be buying 11.2 apples. So when we make our answer for this question, we will say... I could buy 11 apples for $8. So we're going to be rounding down because we don't have enough to get 12 with that amount of money. Number three is a baking question. A cake recipe for five people requires two eggs. How many eggs would you require for a 15-person cake? Okay, so five people, two eggs. How many eggs? So we're going to be looking for that. Would you require for a 15-person cake? All right, so we set up our proportion with the information we've been given. Five people needs two eggs. And we know that we have 15 people. And the question is asking for eggs. And that works out great because everything's lined up in our proportion. I'm writing that as x there. So now I can cross multiply. 5 times x is equal to 2 times 15 or 15 times 2. Same thing. 5x is equal to 30. 
And now, because we've been, we're multiplying to x, we're going to divide by 5 in order to cancel. And we must do that on the other side of the equal sign. So x is equal to 6. So we would require 6 eggs for a 15-person cake.